So today I'll be running you through how to get started on your Cogenex camera and using Insight Explorer. So when you first open up Insight or download Insight on your VM or wherever you want to download, you get prompted with something that kind of looks like this, which it'll look for things in the network, which for me, I've already have my camera on the network. So I'll go ahead and click show all. And here's your device. You know, if you can't see it, there's a chance that the IP is configured something off your network. So we'll go ahead and uh, factory reset that and then once you get here you can use the following network settings or use DHCP for me for my project I had to apply it so let's go on and then once you get it all set up it'll be in this little uh, tab down here menu so connect to the camera see I've already have a job in here so we'll start a new one So we'll just go through these tabs one by one. So set up image, trigger, live video, or load image. The live video is going to be what it's showing right now. The trigger is going to take pictures. And then the trigger is also camera. So now continuous and it'll always be taking pictures. Or when we run the job, external, which is the line wires or yeah, just the line wires. And then manual would be you know, up here, me doing it by myself or on the network. And we'll go through that later. So I'll leave it on camera for now. Locate part. So all of these are different types of locates. So one of my favorites for my camera, which I've experimented with Pad Max before, and I think it's a lot better, but my, I have a little older firmware camera, so I'll we'll use some pattern. Now you see this purple range is where you where the part will be, or what the part is. So I will just go around the Allen wrench here pretty nicely. And the green range here is where I will look for this pattern. So for me, it's never going to be off to this side because my conveyor ends here. So I'll adjust it there. And that should be good. So I'll click OK. You see it's added to my, my list over here, this pattern. So then when you're going to inspect, I mean, different applications require different things. So for me, I mean, as long as I see an Allen wrench, it could be OK. Or I might need it at a certain distance or a certain width. So I'll just go through everything, presence and absence, brightness. So I've used that before to see if it's the right color. So black and white or just red is even different than black. And then distances. So I can measure this whole distance here. I need two points. So I'd have to add points for my locate part. So see there's edge. We can add an edge. We can pick this one. Okay, so now that edge will be kind of best score. So I have thresholds here that I can determine to make that pass or fail. See if we'll see it's still there no matter what. So I'll be back to inspect. You know, now I can measure that edge. Measure from edge to edge. So if I created an edge here and we go back, locate another edge, add there. Okay, you know, now we've got two edges we can look for and kind of determine the width of that. So, let's say distance and add from here to that one. Our distance is 55 pixels. So, so the blob areas where it checks for, you know, that'll check for sometimes cuts or gou gouges in the, in the material. So, you use a, a random conglomeration of pixels. Plot tools, you know, just also, you know, you can create your own edges. I don't really like doing that. Sometimes it'll just not work right. And there's also, you know, just a bunch of different tools you can scroll through and every single thing's got a description to make it go a lot easier. So then when you're going to configure inputs and outputs, this is what you're going to first have. So if you're doing your thing, your uh, job over line inputs and outputs, you can configure the lines. So this would be my line. Well, another thing I'll, I'll go back to inspect. One thing I like to do is adding a uh, math and logic tool. Logic. And this will be an overall pass and fail. So I'll say pattern pass and edge pass. We'll just do, yeah, we'll just do edge pass and edge two or edge one pass. 
and the distance that we have determined passes in the thresholds, then that logic will be true. So see here, everything is uh, tied back to pattern, but this distance is tied to the two edges and then logic has everything. So now we'll go to inputs and outputs. So say if we're doing our line, we can do job result and then logic pass. So that'll be one of our lines. For mine, I have two lines, so might as well just do logic pass and logic fail down those lines. And you can force that on and off if you please, but that's not always correct. So we'll go to communication. So a really easy thing to do would be um, talking to this on a PLC where you'll get different uh, tag. So for me, you can create your own input. So you'd create this right here. So if I created a uh, edit device, so there's a PLC, say Rockwell, Ethernet IP. You know, now I can create logic one pass. Okay. Add logic one fail. Okay. So these are just two separate integers and it'll hold value. So right now we're pass and if we fail, we'll get us well one obviously in the fail and other way around. So when you're triggering over the network. So go back here to set up image. If you wanted to set up to trigger it over the network, you'd have, once you downloaded the AOP from uh, Cogenex and you get all those tags in your tag base library, there'll be a, a trigger enable and a trigger in a control trigger. So the, once the trigger enable is true and then you flash the control trigger, then it'll pretty much just simulate just like that and add a, another picture. So then when you're ready, we'll go keep going now. So field strip, it's kind of just showing pass and fail results, but we don't have any right here. Save job, so test job, run job. So we can go online. And see, you know, if I had a PLC connected, I could be sending triggers. So for this, I have it tied to a distance sensor. So when I see that part, then the camera will take a, a picture, which will trigger. And then it'll run through these codes. And if all these codes pass, I'll have it either go off the conveyor or it'll be sent somewhere else. 